Hey friends, I hope the morning's treating you well. I want to talk about the time I met Dickie Betts. This was uh, probably somewhere 1989 to 91. I was going to this blues jam up in Broad Ripple, north side of Indianapolis. This would later become my neighborhood where I lived in one of the most important parts of my life, one of the happiest parts of my life. But this was before that. I would go up to the patio on Monday nights. They had a blues jam. And uh, it was hosted by Gene Deere. And on other nights, it was Jerry Blues, two great guitar players. And um, I believe this is one of the nights that Gene Deere hosted it. Well, me and my buddy Dave would go up there on Mondays and sometimes sit in. And I'm not much of a jammer at all. I've never really been, but we wanted to get better, you know, and wanted to go up there and meet people and just have fun. So we'd go up and sit in every now and then, and I was usually the worst guitar player in the room. And uh, I would later go on to work. This is at the patio, a place called the patio, a legendary Indianapolis music venue that I would later work at, and it would be my home base. I played there 107 times. I ended up being the very last person to ever play there. Quite the honor when it closed down. But me and my buddy Dave went up there, and it was our time to get on stage, and we go ahead and we get up to play, and we're playing some rudimentary whatever, you know, not so great. And we noticed there's a bunch of commotion at the door while we're playing, mm -hmm and uh, this group of people come in and it was like the parting of the Red Sea where people just kind of separated and uh, these guys walk right down to the front of the stage and step up on and it's Dickie Betts and I didn't realize at the time but Dickie Betts had played at the sister club it was a bigger theater club called The Vogue which is still there in Broad Ripple he had played there and his gig was over and he wanted to go jam so he went over to the blues jam it's just like one block away and they came over and i remember he got up on stage plugged in a guitar and i just kind of had still had my guitar on and i kind of looked back and forth and i just stepped back and just kind of walked my back up against the wall and tried to blend in with the woodwork like, what the hell am I going to do? But he had a he had a key player, I guess it was an organ player, who brought over some keyboard, and um, he was blind. I don't know who that was. I should know that. But um, it's really, really good. And I don't remember who else was with him. I'm guessing some people from his band or his entourage or whatever came over with him. But I got to play with Dickie Betts and whoever this uh, keyboard player was. And I remember we played Stormy Monday. And like I said, man, I'm just like, I rolled back the volume on my volume knob and I just stayed back out of it. But um, he played and then a couple songs later, somebody shooed me off the stage and I got off the stage, but got to be there when, it sat. And when he was done. I mean, he brought the place down. You can imagine. Imagine your local. Imagine your local blues jam. The people that would go to a blues jam to begin with, and then Dickie Betts shows up. Just imagine what that would be like. That's you know that it was kind of ridiculous in that sort of way, and we're all just like, oh my god. And he, like I said, he played great. He has a reputation for being a little bit prickly, but he was nice. You know, he kind of like hung a little bit and talked and he was nice to me. I don't remember like some big, huge story that came from it or whatever, other than I can say I got to jam with Dickie Betts. I'm trying to think of a good analogy for this, but um, to say that I got to jam with Dickie Betts is kind of like saying that I got to, if I screwed in one rivet on the Eiffel Tower claiming I built it, you know. There wasn't a lot to that, but I, I was on stage at the same time, me and my buddy Dave, and we had a damn good time with it. Later, when the patio closed down, I remember a lot of people telling stories about it, and since I had so many stories from that, I started telling that story to 
story to people. I think even local press, they told the story. And um, I just realized I'd never had talked about it that much because there were so many other cool things that had happened. So I'm reminded of all of this, and the reason I'm talking about this is I uploaded a video yesterday or the day before of um, Kenny Vaughn talking about uh, getting to see the Allman Brothers back in the day with Dwayne and then later getting to tour. Well, he's touring with Lucinda Williams. They opened for the Allman Brothers, and he had some fun stories. That story's about Dickie Betts. And there's a book that I'd been reading that I really enjoyed. Um, the author uh, sent, sent it to me, and it's just kind of a biography of the Allman Brothers, and it talked about a little window of the years. I'm not going to go too far into it, but I really enjoyed it. I think you might dig it. Part I really dug was um, after Dwayne died. So I never really went that far down the rabbit hole on Allman Brothers history. I knew a little bit about it, but it's neat hearing more and hearing how Dickie Betts really just kept all that together, you know, just by being a tough, no nonsense guy. And he's like, we're going to do this. And he pulled that together and they kept going forward and became, you know, an even more legendary band. I'm not going to say they were better or worse or whatever, but I really enjoyed reading that stuff in the bo biography, and I will post that down below. I might make a video about it. I'd like to interview the author, but I'm not sure that we'll ever be in the same zip code together, but it's fun to look at it, and like I said, just click down below and take a look at it. And I just got back from... Me and my buddy Todd Fox went out and did a big, long loop um, down through Mississippi, Arkansas, Texas. And we interviewed Jimbo Mathis on that trip, which was great. Go click on some of that stuff and watch it if you haven't. I think it was really good. And we got to see my old friend John D. Graham. And uh, I posted all that stuff already. It's really good stuff. And then we came up north through Lubbock. We went to Littlefield, where Waylon was from. I have some special stuff to post and share with you guys soon from that. There's some nice stuff from Lubbock that I want to share with you. We went to the Cadillac Ranch um, outside of Amarillo, came up through Oklahoma, went to, through Tulsa. It was good. all right. Man, I went to Muskogee and kind of spent an afternoon in Muskogee. I like Muskogee. I don't think that I really understood. Uh, I'd been to Muskogee before, but I don't remember checking it out that much. But it was all right, man. It was like aesthetically, it was an old looking city and it seemed like it was doing pretty well. And I liked it. I really liked the vibe of it and um, the downtown area and a lot of good, cool history there. You know, a lot of good stuff. Anyway, enjoyed that. And we came on home, but it's good to be home. And I'm just trying to get caught up. I have some music stuff that I'm trying to get caught up with. I'm doing stuff today. If you're watching this on Saturday, I'm doing stuff today and tomorrow that I'll be able to share with you guys somewhere down the road, but it's music oriented and um, just putting together some gigs for next year and all that and looking forward to playing some music and sharing some of that here on the channel. But. Tell me down below, did you ever meet Dickie Betts? Did you ever get to jam with him at your local blues jam? What would people think if Dickie Betts walked in to your local blues jam? I'd like to know that. Anyhow, I'll talk to you guys sometime soon. Much love to you.